Hello, namaste to everyone. Uh, today also I am here with my uh, another presentation. Uh, today uh, I am going to uh, share some ideas on uh, critical discourse analysis or CDA. Uh, I hope uh, this presentation uh, will be useful for the students of advanced level, uh, especially master's level and above. And comparatively, uh, this presentation will be longer uh, than the previous sessions. Uh, I have prepared almost 90 slides here. So I request all of you to be patient and watch uh, this session uh, till the end. Uh, without any delay, uh, let me present the overview of uh, the presentation first. So let me show the overview. Uh, in this uh, long session, uh, I'll be talking about uh, different aspects of uh, critical discourse analysis. So I'll be talking about the meaning of discourse, uh, discourse analysis, and critical discourse analysis. Uh, then uh, I'll be uh, talking about aims, agendas, and aspects of CDA. Uh, we'll be talking about the differences between CDA and DA, uh, critical discourse analysis, and discourse analysis. Uh, similarly, uh, I'll be talking about uh, cultural theory of critical discourse analysis, uh, Michel Foucault's uh, ideas or the views on discourse, uh, discourse analysis, uh, the differences between uh, discourse and ideology. Uh, I'll be setting lights on this topic also. Uh, similarly, I'll be talking about uh, discourse structure, the ingredients or the constituents of discourse. Uh, then uh, critical discourse analysis in uh, ELT or EFL classroom, uh, approaches and methods to CDA research. And at last, uh, I'll be talking about application of CDA. Uh, so these are uh, the topics to be discussed in today's presentation. Now, uh, let me begin uh, the session with uh, the basic concepts of discourse, discourse analysis, and critical discourse analysis. Uh, simply, discourse uh, refers to a text and talk produced by the language users we people uh, it is the uh, it has it can be understood discourse can be understood in uh, three ways the first one is uh, discourse is language beyond the sen sentence level uh, any uh, text or talk beyond sentence level or language at the supra sentential unit uh, can be understood as a discourse uh, that may be paragraph, uh, an essay, uh, a story, a poem, a drama, and so on. Uh, this is the simple meaning of discourse. Uh, discourse can also be understood as language uh, used in communication or language in use. And in broader sense, uh, discourse can be understood as a social practice that may include not only linguistic units, linguistic instances, uh, it may include uh, different non-linguistic, non-specific instances of language also. So uh, when you uh, hear the word discourse, you can understand it in three different senses. The first one is language beyond the sentence level or supra-sentential unit of language. The second one is language in use, language used in communication that may be oral or written. Uh, the third one is language uh, as a social practice. Uh, our discourse can be understood as a broader range of social practice that may include both non-linguistic as well as a non-specific instances of language. And discourse, the term discourse uh, uh, can be understood uh, from different disciplinary point of view also. Uh, in general, uh, any linguistic unit larger than a sentence label uh, can be understood as a discourse. It may involve the ways of 
connecting sentences, organizing information, and structuring interactions, text, and so on. Uh, in practice, in day-to-day -day practice, in general practice, discourse can be understood as a behavioral unit which constitutes recognizable speech events or a set of utterances in communication. Uh, that, is gen that is the understanding of discourse in practice. Uh, in the field of social science, uh, discourse can be understood as verbal reports of individuals uh, on a particular topic, uh, which may be used to refer to the meaning at the uh, more macro level, uh, bigger level. Uh, similarly, uh, discourse uh, is understood in other disciplines also in different ways. Uh, in the field of literature, uh, discourse is understood as a body of text that relates to another, one another in terms of its common features uh, on the basis of some shared features. A uh, particular body of uh, text can be uh, taken as discourse or can be understood as discourse. Uh, in the discipline of linguistics, uh, discourse is understood as a formal and lengthy discussion uh, of a subject uh, that may be oral or written or uh, spoken or written. Uh, in a philosophical discipline or from ideological point of view, discourse uh, is understood as a speech or writing. Uh, uh, that is seen from the point of view of uh, a particular belief, values, and categories with which it embodies. Uh, so these are different uh, senses of discourse from disciplinary point of view. So once again, uh, I want to repeat here, uh, discourse can be understood in uh, three senses. The first one is discourse is the use of language or the linguistic unit beyond the sentence level. Discourse also means the uh, use of language in context or language in use. And the third one is discourse uh, is a social practice. Uh, and from different uh, disciplinary point of view, uh, discourse is understood in different ways that I have uh, mentioned here. Uh, now, uh, the second thing is what discourse analysis or DA is. Uh, simply the analysis of discourse, analysis of text or talk uh, on the basis of its forms, uh, composition, uh, content, uh, coherence, uh, cohesion, and so on is a discourse analysis. So it is a discipline also. It is an area of study also. Uh, in the sense, we can say that it is the study of stretches of spoken and written language above the sentence level. So it is the study of uh, the uh, language above the sentence level or the suprasentential unit of language. The study of form and content of a uh, suprasentential unit of language, uh, paragraphs, uh, whole text, uh, the text of, uh, let's say, poems, stories, uh, fiction, non-fiction, uh, various types of literature uh, okay, is, uh, can be understood as discourse analysis. Uh, DA or discourse analysis refers to the interpretation of the structure of discourse, how a particular discourse is composed, uh, what is the discourse formation process, what is the discursive process, what is the non-discursive process. So how a discourse writer or discourse maker composes a discourse, what textual elements are used, what linguistic features are used, what non-linguistic features are used. Okay, what verbal signs are used, what non-verbal signs are used uh, in the composition of discourse. Okay, and how those uh, elements uh, are used to convey certain meaning, certain message, certain ideas, certain views. Uh, these things are uh, duly considered, duly studied uh, in the discipline of discourse analysis. Uh, Michel Foucault, uh, who is one of the pioneering figure uh, of uh, discourse analysis has uh, defined the from discourse uh, in three ways. Uh, the first one is uh, according to Michel Foucault, uh, discourse is a general domain of all statements. Uh, it means uh, discourse uh, is language above 
सेंटेंस लेवल और द सुप्रा सेंटेंसियल यूनिट ऑफ लैंग्वेज इज डिस्कोर्स दिस इज द फर्स्ट मीनिंग गिवन बाय मिशेल फुकु इज द जनरल डोमेन ऑफ ऑल द स्टेटमेंट्स इट इज द कलेक्शन ऑफ द लिंग्विस्टिक यूनिट्स बियोंड द सेंटेंस लेवल व्हिच मे बी कोहेरेंट कोहेसिव व्हिच मे कन्वे सर्टेन मीनिंग नेक्स्ट वन इज डिस्कोर्स इज एन इंडिविजुअलाइजेबल ग्रुप ऑफ स्टेटमेंट्स सो द डिस्कोर्सेस आर डिस्कोर्स यूनिट्स uh found in different disciplines different institutions different organizations may not be same so every discourse is discipline specific institution specific uh field specific and so on so uh, those groups of sentences okay which represent particular social institution particular social group particular social ideology Uh, can also be understood as discourse this is the second meaning given by uh, uh, michel foucault so an individualizable group of statements uh, for example we say a uh, marxist discourse feminist discourse uh, uh, colonial discourse post colonial discourse and so on so in these different disciplines different types of okay discourses are produced uh, they are practiced and uh, the third uh, definition given by michel foucault is discourse is a regulated practice that accounts for a number of statements uh, it means uh, uh, discourse uh, is used as a form of regulated practice of language use uh, it means uh, with the help of discourse uh, the uh, uh, discourse makers or different institution different organizations can draw a uh, criteria uh, draw a line between what is sayable what is unsayable what can be done what cannot be done uh, and so on so once again uh, michel foucault uh, has defined the term discourse in three different ways the first one is a uh, discourse as a general domain of all statements this is first view first meaning the second meaning is a uh, discourse is uh an individualizable group of statements and the third one is a discourse as a regulated practice that accounts for a number of statements the first one is very simple uh it simply means uh that discourse is a supra sentential unit of language uh second uh, meaning is also not that much difficult uh that uh, second meaning refers to uh uh discipline specific or area specific a uh, nature of discourse discourse may differ from one discipline or one area to another uh, and the third one is discourse can also be used for regulating the behavior of the people regulating the activities of the people there are different discourses about the code of conduct the rules uh, uh, rules to be followed in a particular institution particular place uh, they can be kept under the third uh, under the third definition now uh, let me go to next uh, next slide uh, now we are becoming more specific uh, i hope uh, in today's presentation uh, most of the concepts most of the ideas uh, related to uh, critical discourse analysis will be clear i'll try my best to make you clear about this Uh, but you must have patience uh, you have to watch this video till the end now uh, uh, our main focus uh, is on critical discourse analysis uh, i want to uh, make you clear about uh, cda or critical discourse analysis first uh, earlier i told you that uh, discourse is simply a supra sentential unit of language or uh, language in use or as a social practice uh, while talking about discourse analysis i said that uh, analysis of the supra sentential unit of language is discourse analysis now what is critical discourse analysis we have to be clear about this simply critical discourse analysis or cda is 
a socio-political approach to analyzing discourse. If we analyze a particular text and talk or any type of discourse that may be oral or written or verbal or non-verbal, wearing the glasses, wearing the glasses of uh, socio-political approach or if you see a particular discourse, particular text and talk from socio-political point of view, that is critical discourse analysis. Your analysis becomes critical discourse analysis. You are looking at discourse, you are analyzing discourse with critical perspective. Generally, critical discourse analysis aims to make invisible more visible and transparent. Uh, you have to understand this concept here. Uh, the critical discourse analysis uh, or the theorist of CDA assume or they claim that language is not only a jumble of words and sentences. Language is a power tool. Language can never be politically neutral. Many things are invisible within the language. Many things are invisible beneath our text and talk. Our intention, our motives, our goals, our desire to exercise certain power, our intention to impose certain ideology, our intention to justify or falsify something, and so on. Uh, these things are hidden. These things are not seen directly, very openly, in overt manner in communication. And critical discourse analysis aims to expose it, aims to make all these things invisible, visible and transparent. This is critical discourse analysis. Critical discourse analysis studies the way social power abuse, dominance and inequality are enacted, reproduced and registered by text and talk in the social and political context. As I told you earlier, language or a discourse is not only a jumble of words and sentences. Discourse has connection with power. So using discourse, using text and talk, people or we ourselves may exercise power. And how that social power abuse is practiced, how dominance is practiced, how inequality is practiced, how all these things are enacted, how they are reproduced and how they are registered, how text and talk, how discourse is used to support something, to oppose something, to justify something or to falsify something, how a language is used or, or let's say how discourse is used to serve particular political interest, interest of particular group particular person, particular organization, and so on. These things are the concerns of critical discourse analysis. As Van Dyke says, critical discourse analysis is the study of how social power abuse, dominance, and inequality are enacted, reproduced, and registered by the text and talk. We must be clear here, all the time a discourse may not be used to, to practice domination. Discourse is also used to resist against domination. And the study of the study of how discourse is used to practice domination or to resist domination. That study is 
critical discourse analysis so i hope uh, you are uh, somehow clear about this uh, i have uh, written some i have uh, i have presented some uh, points here so in other words cda is a type of discourse analytical research that primarily studies studies the way social power abuse dominance and inequality are enacted reproduced and registered by text and talk in the social and political context cda practitioners want to understand and expose and ultimately register social inequality discourse general discourse analysis is mostly uh, descriptive only explanatory only discourse analysis is not emancipatory discourse analysis is not uh, interventionist but critical discourse analysis is not only descriptory uh, dis descriptive and uh, explanatory but also emancipatory the ultimate goal of critical discourse analysis is empowering the people making the people aware of how language is used and abused how power is used and abused with the help of language with the help of discourse how discourse is used and misused how discourse is used to uh, fulfill the hidden motives of the uh, politicians or power mongers or those uh, uh, so called okay uh, leaders or the okay uh, ruling class people of the society in this sense it is critical so critical discourse analysis is a branch of critical linguistics which studies the relationship between discourse events and uh, socio political plus cultural factors within a text uh, so how text embodies these features uh, these things are studied in critical discourse analysis cda treats social practices in terms of their implications for things like status uh, discourse and status discourse and solidarity discourse and distribution of social goods and power but these things are taken into consideration uh, in uh, critical discourse analysis in this study uh, it focuses on uh, it means cda cda focuses on why and how the language works the way it does language is not only the means of communication language is a political tool also uh, discourse theorists almost all discourse theorists claim that language can never be value free language can never be politically neutral discourse can never be politically neutral and how discourse functions how language is used and misused by the people these things are studied in critical discourse analysis it studies both whiteness 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 and howness of language it focuses on why and how the language works the way it does so i have uh, added some definitions here uh, it may not be possible to uh, explain all these definitions i sincerely suggest you uh, uh, to go through these definitions uh, almost all these definitions uh, uh, talk about the use of cda uh, to analyze discourse uh, with reference to power with reference to politics uh, with reference to ideology uh with reference to dominance uh with reference to inequality uh with reference to suppression oppression and finally how discourse can also be used as a weapon for liberation weapon for radicalization transformation emancipation and so on so i uh, request you to uh, have a pause while watching uh this video and uh, uh okay go through these definitions and get ideas uh as i told you earlier uh within the tradition of uh, critical discourse analysis uh our focus is how language or how discourse is used to practice dominations so what are the issues 
uh, what are the issues uh, okay uh, of uh, critical discourse analysis uh, one one maybe domination how language is used to uh, practice domination to dominate people uh, to practice discrimination how discourse is used for discrimination to justify the discrimination to justify the exploitation to justify the dehumanization to justify uh, all those uh, ideologically driven uh, okay common sense of language all those ideologies which are used to justify the injustice done by those uh, uh, those rulers and so on these are the concerns so how all these things are reflected in the text and talk uh, we uh, we focus on this in critical discourse analysis and cda exposes uh, some social patterns what is what are the ultimate goals of critical discourse analyst if you are a, a critical discourse analyst uh, what things you have to keep in your mind so through your discourse analysis is to try to bring awareness in the people awareness in the readers awareness in uh, okay the people uh, from different aspects of life we have to aware the people that language is not only a jumble of words and sentences language is not only uh, a means of communication language is power tool language is uh, language may be used to uh, use and abuse power discourse may be used to use and abuse power different types of discourses may be used to justify and falsify something discourses may be used to uh, serve the interest hidden motives of the okay suppressors oppressors we have to aware we have to aware the people the readers of this and finally we have to bring awareness in the people we have to uh, advocate for resistance we have to cause resistance we have to bring we should we have to contribute to bring uh, emancipation uh, we have to uh, contribute to promote social actions social justice we have to uh, contribute to bring social change and justice so these are the concerns of critical discourse analysis and there are some principles of critical discourse analysis let me read these principles uh, as i mentioned earlier uh, critical discourse analysis assumes that language is a social practice language is not only discourse is not only a supra sentential unit of language discourse is not only the language used in communication discourse is language used in social practice so language is a social practice this is one guiding principle of critical discourse analysis critical discourse analysis is interdisciplinary uh, in the research in the exploration of critical discourse analysis uh, we bring the ideas we bring the ideas from various disciplines we may borrow the relevant ideas informations theories from sociology political science economics uh, psychology uh, linguistics uh, language studies critical language studies and so on and all these ideas are uh, assimilated all these ideas are assimilated uh, incorporated uh, uh, in the critical study of discourse uh, cda assumes that uh, there is a dialectical two way relationship between text and other social subjects language and power language and society uh, language and ideology uh, discourse and truth all these have dialectical relationship they influence each other they affect each other linguistic structures are purposeful i have already told you that language is not politically neutral language is politically non neutral every linguistic utterance we produce has certain uh, intention has certain uh, purpose uh, that purpose may be political purpose uh, we associate uh, this thing uh, with politics and power in cda so linguistic structures are purposeful power and dominance are usually organized and institutionalized so different uh, groups are there different institutions are there different organizations are there 
okay, for the exercise of power, for the exercise of dominance, and uh, for this purpose, uh, discourse is uh, used as a powerful tool. Power relations and access are dynamic. Uh, what sort of power relations and access uh, existed in the past? They may not exist now, and in tomorrow, and uh, tomorrow again, they may be changed. So, power relations and access are uh, always okay, emergent, always uh, dynamic. So, discourse and access. Uh, all the people may not have the equal degree of discourse, same degree of discourse, I mean, same degree of access, same degree of access to all sorts of discourse. Uh, some, uh, some are uh some some people may be deprived of accessing certain discourse you can take the example of okay uh, uh religious discourses even political discourses and other and discourse is always historical that's why discourse uh or any text and talk should be understood uh by keeping the historical context uh, the time, the place where that particular discourse was produced, uh, the political reality, social composition uh, of uh, the time when that discourse was produced. So these things should be kept in mind uh, as guiding principles uh, in critical discourse analysis. Uh, these are called the principles of discourse analysis. Now, uh, what are the aims and goals of discourse analysis? or critical discourse analysis. If you are a critical discourse analyst, what goals, what aims you have? So I have uh, I have attached some points here. Uh, the first one is to perceive language use as social practice. So critical discourse analysts uh, want to establish that language is a, a tool of uh, Tool, tool used for exercising okay, power, dominance, and so on. So, language is not only the individual means of communication. Language is a means of social communication. Language is used for the social practice. Or in other words, language should be understood as a social practice itself. Uh, another goal of CDA is to investigate how language is used to construct and maintain power relationship in the society. So, uh, how uh, okay, power is exercised, how domination is exercised, how hegemony is exercised with the help of discourse, how the so-called knowledge is produced with the help of discourse, and how so-called ideology is produced with the help of discourse, and how all these things are used to keep the people in illusion in the society, how all these things are used to serve certain interests in the society. Uh, this is also uh, the goal of critical discourse analysis. Uh, the, another goal of critical discourse analysis is to deconstruct, to dismantle the covert ideology which is hidden in the text and talk. So what political ideology is hidden? What political ideology okay is unseen or covert uh, in a particular text and talk uh, a discourse analyst reveals it exposes it digs it out and uh, the hidden intention hidden intention the political reason behind a uh, particular text and talk uh, that is exposed by a critical discourse analyst similarly a critical discourse analyst wants to show the uh, relationship between language and power. So, what is the interconnection between language and power? How language is used as a power tool, okay, by the people. Uh, this is also the concern, okay, uh, of critical discourse analysis. Uh, next one is to keep eyes and social issues critically and provide a possible ways of problem solving. As I told you earlier, uh, critical discourse analysts are not only uh, uh, the, those analysts who uh, describe a particular text, uh, who explain particular text, uh, their uh, job is not only exposing the problem through a text, their job is uh, giving the solution also. So they provide a possible uh, way of problem solving. Okay, uh, This is also the aim or the goal of 
uh, critical discourse analysis. Uh, next one is uh, to bring social change, socio-political change in the society, bringing awareness, uh, okay, bringing change in the society, uh, bringing uh, transformation in the society, awaiting the people, leading the people from darkness towards light, empowering the people. Uh, uh, okay, uh, this one. Uh, to study discourse and its function in society, how discourse uh, rules the people, how discourse governs the people, how discourse is used to keep the people in illusion, okay, how discourse is used for, uh, okay, let's say, suppressing the people, oppressing the people, not only that, how discourse is used to emancipate the people in the society, uh, that is also the concern of critical discourse analysis. Uh, another one is to reveal the uh, inter uh, interrelation among language, ideology and power. So, what is the triangular relationship between language, ideology, and power? How uh, ideology is reflected through text and talk, and how that ideology is uh, used to exercise power? Okay, whether power only comes from the uh, upper level of the society or power circulates everywhere. Michel Foucault says that power does not always come from the upper ladder of the society, power is everywhere. Uh, this is uh, unlike Marxist idea, uh, to see how so several uh, forms of inequalities are expressed, enacted, legitimized, and reproduced in discourse. So uh, these are the uh, common agendas, common aims, or let's say, or the goals of uh, critical discourse analysis. Uh, there are different uh, micro and uh, micro and macro aspects uh, of critical discourse analysis. Uh, in other words, uh, critical discourse analysis can be done by keeping micro aspects of a text and talk as well as the macro aspects of a text and talk. Here micro aspects uh, refers to uh, the study of oral text by keeping uh, different uh, textual elements, conversational elements, are the constituents uh, uh, in mind like uh, uh, if we are analyzing a text from uh, oral text from micro perspective uh, you may have to analyze transactions in the text what sort of acts communicative acts are made in the text moves in the text adjacency pairs used in the text tone taking uh, uh, used in the text so uh, the uh, textual elements, uh, mainly in micro study, micro analysis of the text, we focus on the textual elements, linguistic elements, conversational elements, conversational properties, if that is oral. And if that is a uh, written text, uh, we focus on uh, how that written text is composed. Uh, uh, okay, what is the textuality of the text? Okay, how coherence is maintained in the text? What stylistic features are used by the uh, writer uh, in the text? How cohesion is maintained in the text? So mainly we focus on coherence and cohesion. Uh, if we are analyzing uh, the analyzing the uh, micro aspects of the text. Uh, okay, as I told you earlier, uh, discourse analysis, or really critical discourse analysis, is not only the uh, analysis of linguistic properties. Uh, is the analysis of language and how uh, that language is used okay, to exercise uh, politics and power. So, what are the invisible things beneath discourse? So, if you study those covert properties or invisible elements like the notion of power, dominance, ideology, access, mind control, history and culture. Uh, this is uh, the analysis of macro aspect of the text. So uh, as I told you earlier, uh, language is not politically neutral. Discourse can never be value free. So how a particular discourse 
is used to exercise power, dominance. How particular discourse is used to exercise, to establish certain ideology. So whether that particular ideology is, I mean, particular discourse is used to serve the interest of the oppressors or the oppressed. So these things are analyzed. These things are uh, known as the macro aspects of uh, critical discourse analysis. Uh, along with this, uh, discursive strategies, how the particular discourse is composed, what strategies have been used by the discourse makers, discourse users to justify or falsify something. These things are also taken into consideration. For example, perspectivism, self-representation, argumentation, mitigation, uh, discursive construction of realities, resistance. Uh, these things come under macro aspect of CDA. Genres, what sort of uh, text, what, what sort of discourse is that? Whether it is political genre or media, literary, religious, professional, and academic discourse. So, what sort of discourse is this? What is the intertextual and interdiscursive relationships in the text? Similarly, what are the what is the intricate relationship between text, talk, social cognition, power, society, and culture? So, these things are taken into consideration while having critical discourse analysis. So a good critical discourse analyst considers both micro elements, mostly linguistic elements, and macro elements, mostly extra linguistic elements, non-linguistic elements, uh, different uh, socio-political variables, okay, while making the analysis. Now, okay, uh, we are the students of uh, ELT, English language teaching. We are the students of language and literature. Uh, after understanding the concept of, concept of critical discourse analysis, uh, we should be able to apply uh, CDA uh, to classroom discourse analysis, classroom study also. While analyzing the language used by the teachers in the classroom, while analyzing the language used by the students in the classroom, language or the discourse used in uh, teaching learning materials, all these things, but very critically. So it means there are some classroom implications of critical discourse analysis. The tools of CDA can be used to have critical analysis, critical study of uh, classroom activities by keeping uh, the features of language, features of discourse used for pedag pedagogical purpose, especially for uh, teaching language. So here are some implications of uh, critical discourse analysis in language teaching. Uh, the first one is, uh, it is used to critically analyze the classroom discourse. Analyzing classroom discourse critically uh, means uh, not only analyzing the uh, uh, discourse, classroom discourse from a linguistic point of view, associating that classroom discourse with ideology, with domination, suppression, with the practice of foregrounding and backgrounding, with the practice of marginalizing and privileging, the teacher may practice or a teacher's uh, teacher's intention of marginalizing certain students or privileging certain students can be known, can be reflected in his or her language. So he or she may not use the same type of remarks, same standard language to talk to all types of students. He, his or her language may be gender bias class biased, personality biased, okay, uh, physical ability biased and so on. So we have, we can use the tools of critical discourse analysis 
to know the politics of teacher's language. Politics of, uh, let's say, uh, syllabus designer's language. Politics of curriculum developer's language. ELT practitioner's language and so on. To develop critical and creative thinking in the learners, also uh, this, uh, this tool can be used. We can uh, make the students or the learners very critical. We can make them not to take anything for granted. Uh, we can develop critical consciousness in the learners. We can use, uh, we can practice uh, critical pedagogy. For practicing critical pedagogy, uh, critical discourse analysis will be very much supportive. To select appropriate teaching learning materials and methods. So what sort of methods will be appropriate for the students who are learning language? Uh, how the teacher's materials can be designed so that the students from all aspects of life uh, can get equal attention from the teachers. So how non-discriminatory type of methods and materials can be uh, developed for this purpose. Also, uh, critical discourse analysis can be used in the classroom. To bring out the individual potentialities, uh, to, to fully practice uh, the concept of multiple intelligence, to fully practice the uh, let's say concept of uh, critical pedagogy, critical language teaching, uh, CDA will be very much useful. Uh, critical discourse analysis can carry out research on this also. To implement the concept of critical language teaching, I have already told you. To deal with the diversified situation of the classroom. A classroom has diversified teachers. There are the students from different aspects of life. They may be different from each other in terms of language, in terms of status, in terms of culture, in terms of religion, in terms, in terms of their uh, physical ability, in terms of their uh, geographical origin, ethnicity, gender, and so on. And to deal with uh, the diversified situation of the classroom. This may be very much useful. The tools of critical discourse analysis may be very much useful. To teach language very critically. To teach English language very critically. This, uh, the, 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 this tool of critical discourse analysis can be used. Because critical discourse analysis always, always make us conscious conscious of not to take anything for granted. You can take the example of English language. Because of the dominance of English language, many local languages, many vernacular languages of the world are in crisis. So this aspect, this invisible aspect, this non-linguistic aspect of English language, can also be uh, studied, can also be analyzed uh, with the tools of critical discourse analysis. And to make the learners clear about the politics of language and discourse also, uh, we can use uh, the tools of critical discourse analysis. Uh, as I told you earlier, uh, okay, critical discourse analysis uh, is different from discourse analysis. The major difference is and critical discourse analysis, we take language as a social practice, we take language as a power tool, we take discourse as a power tool, while uh, making uh, discourse analysis, while analyzing the text and talk, uh, we, uh, we focus on uh, four levels of adequacy, we observe the text, we describe the text, we explain the text, and we uh, see the uh, text very critically, we associate the text with politics, power, uh, with the issues of dominance, suppression, oppression, uh, we, we, we analyze the text from global pr perspective. We not only focus on the okay, micro aspect of the text, uh, we focus on the macro aspect of the text. Uh, we go beyond the text to analyze the text. Uh, so in this sense, uh, critical discourse analysis 
is different from discourse analysis and other differences are mentioned here uh, please go through these differences while uh, watching uh, this video uh, now uh, next topic is uh, cultural theory and the models of discourse or cultural theory of discourse analysis uh, as i told you earlier uh, uh, discourse is not only a jumble of words and sentences uh, discourse uh, uh, does not remain same every time and next thing is discourse differs from one institution to another institution one culture to another culture discourse uh, may be the manifestation of certain cultural condition so discourse and culture are embedded so in discourse analysis in critical discourse analysis we keep cultural components in mind discourse analysis in cultural studies is derived from the post structuralist philosophies and theories uh, Structuralist philosophy is only focus on the linguistic structures, only focus on the micro aspects of the text while making analysis. Uh, but uh, uh, critical discourse analysis uh, goes beyond goes beyond uh, the micro aspect and macro aspects of the text. Text and culture, text and uh, politics, text and power. Okay, all these things are taken into consideration. So, in this sense, uh, we can say that the cultural theory of discourse analysis is post-structuralist theory, or it is influenced by post-structuralist philosophy and theories. Uh, uh, it views discourse from institutional perspective. It assumes that discourse is always institutionally conditioned. Okay, uh, discourse differs from one institution to another institution one group to another group one society to another society one organization to another organization every organization every institution has its own values and assumptions those values and assumptions govern the way we speak the way we write our text and talk are always influenced they are molded, they are shaped by the cultural realities, institutional norms and values. Uh, this is uh, what uh, we call the cultural theory of discourse analysis and mainly uh, the contribution of Michel Foucault and uh, Peshu. Foucault and Peshu uh, is very much important in cultural theory. Uh, okay, regarding cultural theory, uh, MacDonnell uh, says that a discourse as a particular area of language use may be identified by the institutions. It means uh, different institutions may have different discourses, uh, institutions to which it relates and uh, by the positions from which it comes and which it marks out for the speaker. So it, uh, it means okay, every discourse is cultural, every discourse has a cultural connection, uh, okay, uh, discourse is institutional product. Uh, a discourse, uh, a cultural theory of discourse is associated with uh, Foucault and Peshu, I have told you already. Uh, in both models, uh, okay, a discourse is taken to represent a voice within institutional and social position. Discourse is a voice, but within uh, institutional or social position and this voice uh, okay the discourse you produce represents the voice that voice uh, uh, may come from particular institutional or social position there is institutional nature of discourse cultural theory assumes that discourse has institutional nature the Institutional nature of discourse and its situatedness in the society is central uh, in this theory. So, a discourse is not only uh, the jumble of sentences or statements. A discourse is not a disembodied collection of statements. It is a systematic grouping of utterances which have cultural meanings, cultural connection, cultural association. And comparatively, 
Foucault's model of discourse uh, presents a fairly stable notion of discourse, uh, whereas uh, Michel Pechou's uh, notion is more dynamic. Uh, okay, there are these are the differences. Uh, Pechou's model reflects that discourses do not occur in isolation, but in dialogue. Uh, discourse have dialogic nature. Uh, discourse uh, discourses are in relation to or opposite to uh, the discourses produced by other groups. It means discourses are contrastive in nature. Discourses may not be correlative in nature. They, may, they are contrastive. Okay. It means discourses uh, produced uh, by different uh, institutions uh, may not correlate. They differ from each other. They may contrast from each other. And there always exists ideological struggle and uh, inequality between the discourses, according to uh, okay, Michel Pechou. Words and sentences do not have meaning in themselves. Uh, they are ideological, they are cultural. Uh, ideological struggle is at the heart of discourse. There is ideological struggle. Uh, different discourses may uh, embody different ideologies, and there, there, there exists. Uh, a kind of struggle between uh, different types of discourses. Uh, okay, uh, Beshu says that discourse is dynamic in nature. Okay, so uh, please uh, read these points. Uh, there are some uh, major interpretations of the discourse in cultural theories. Dialogue is primary condition of discourse in uh, speech and writing. Uh, okay, uh, they are social also. Discourse structures both our sense of reality and notion of our identity. To which culture, to which institution we belong, uh, to which ideology we belong, ideological group we belong, uh, what sort of uh, reality we want to reflect. All these things are determined by uh, discourse. Uh, larger discursive structures shape our interpretation of text, how we interpret the text. Uh, it depends on larger discurs discursive structure, larger structures of discourse. Discourses are principally organized around the practices of exclusion. Uh, you have to know the notion of exclusion here. Uh, uh, cultural theorists uh, claim that uh, all sorts of discourses may not be accessible for all people. Some discourses are accessible for some people, but not for all. You can take the example of academic discourse, religious doctrines, religious discourses, uh, even some political uh, discourses. Uh, there is a practice of inclusion and exclusion in discourse also. It is because of ideological differences, cultural differences. Uh, political differences, uh, class differences, and so on. Because of different variables, differences in the variables, socio-political variables, there is variation, there is differentiation, there is inequality in the access of discourse also. Now let's talk about uh, Michel Foucault and uh, his views on discourse analysis. Actually, cracking the codes of Michel Foucault is really a hard nut to crack. And in a single lecture, single presentation of, of around one hour, uh, we may not be able to understand Michel Foucault and his theories, discourse theories clearly. So I'm not going to uh, give the uh, detail, detail of uh, Michel Foucault's theories. So I'll try my best to uh, make some key concepts clear. Those concepts related to discourse only. So what Michel Foucault says about discourse, uh, mainly I'll focus on this. Uh, Michel Foucault has defined discourse as a way of constituting knowledge. Knowledge 
is constituted that knowledge may be true or false that is not that may not be universal but that is constituted with the help of discourse it means in our text and talk there is knowledge i mean using text and talk knowledge is composed and this knowledge is not composed in isolation it is composed it is constituted together with social practices discourse is discourse refers to ways of constituting constituting knowledge together with social practices and social context he is also a cultural theorist he also uh, he also claimed that discourse is institutional in nature social in nature political in nature and human subjectivity our subjectivity our identity who we are these are determined these are embodied by discourse power relations are reflected in discourse so in one sentence we can say discourse refers to the ways of constituting knowledge together with the social practices forms of subjectivity and power relations which in here in here which lie in source knowledge and relations between them and according to michel foucault discourse is a practice that has its own forms of sequence and order and progression sequence and succession he views discourse uh, from social perspective he says discourse is a social practice discourse is not only structural uh, he is a post structuralist he gives post structural interpretation of discourse uh, Foucault regards discourse as central human activity, not universal domain of text or a vast sea of signification. He says people's understanding of the world are shaped, are governed, and they are expressed by discourse. Our identity is the product of discourse. Our knowledge is the product of discourse. Our status is the product of discourse. whatever we do they are influenced by discourse they are uh, constituted by discourse discourse is something which produces something else rather than something which exists in in and of itself it means whatever discourse uh, produces that may not be uh, that may not be objectively true so discourse is something which produces something else rather than uh the reality rather than something which exists in so all the discourses may not be the mirror of reality may not be the mirror of truth discourses may be used may be produced for certain reason discourses may be uh uh used to produce knowledge and knowledge may be uh, uh knowledge may be used uh for serving certain interest certain motive to justify something or to falsify something the knowledge itself may not be objective truth itself is subjective so discourse is something which produces something else rather than something which exists in and of itself discourse is not mere linguistic or structural phenomenon discourse is political phenomenon social phenomenon cultural phenomenon it is social and cultural practice of language that can influence and shape the world issues and here is a, a figure that may make you more clear about uh, foucault's views on discourse analysis or discourse itself according to michel foucault discourse is a way of constituting knowledge together with the social practice forms of subjectivity and power relations discourses are more than ways of thinking and producing meaning discourses constitute the nature unconscious mind and emotional life of the subjects subjects means people or human beings discourses have the features of governmentality with the with the help of discourses uh, the institutions the organization say uh, what is 
acceptable what is not acceptable uh, discourses have uh, such features of governmentality discourses have uh, the uh, capability to differentiate uh, uh, what is normal and what is abnormal by if you go through uh, different uh, uh, texts produced by uh, uh, Michel Foucault, we can understand more about it. How, in course of time, uh, uh, different types of practices, different types of practices, are justified, are embodied uh, in the text and talk in the discourse. Similarly, uh, Foucault says that discourse is a form of power. Uh, regarding power and discourse, uh, Michel Foucault has some uh, reservation uh, on Marxism, Marxist critics. Uh, Marxists say that uh, power is always suppression, power, power is always negative, but Foucault says that power may be negative as well as positive. It may be repressive, non-repressive. Unlike Marxist, Michel Foucault uh, claims that power may not always come from the uh, higher level of the society, higher ladder of the society. Uh, power is circulates, power circulates everywhere. Power is circulated everywhere. Power is not necessarily hierarchical. And power is not necessarily evil. These are some differences you keep in your mind. And he has given three comprehensive definitions of discourse. Uh, I have already mentioned uh, these definitions. So I am not going to explain here. Just I want to read. According to Foucault, uh, discourse refers to the general domain of all statements, an individualizable group of statements, a regulated practice which accounts for a number of statements. I have already explained these uh, three definitions. So, I am not going to explain this here. Let me skip this. Uh, Michel Foucault uh, talks about discourse, power and truth. According to him, power is repressive as well as productive. It is both negative and positive. It is not possessed or dispersed. It is not possessed. It is not possessed only by the powerful people. It is circulated everywhere. It is omnipresent. It is dispersed throughout the society. Power relations are not monolithic. Power relations are dynamic, multifarious. Power relations are not unifarious. They are multifarious. There are multiple dimensions of power. Power is a relation with different degrees of Power is a relation with different degrees of power in relations. So, power itself is relation and it, it has different degrees of power. And where there is power, there is resistance. And resistance is always contained in the power relations. But no power relation is total domination. So, there are some differences between Marxist, Marxist view, Marxist theory and Foucauldian theory. Uh, Foucauldian view on uh, view of let's say uh, discourse analysis and now another concept is discourse on ideology simply ideology uh, includes a set of ideas that constitute uh, one's goals expectations and actions ideologies are the value systems they are the set of values and assumptions that govern the way we think, we behave, we communicate, or we interpret something. We have our own belief, or we are governed by certain belief about what is right, what is wrong, what is to be done, what is not to be done. All these are ideologies. Marxism, feminism, colonialism, post-colonialism, orientalism. These are patriotism. These are some examples of ideologies. In general sense, 
ideologies may be repressive or non-repressive. Marxists say that ideologies are repressive. Ideologies are false consciousness. According to Marxist, ideologies are used to keep the people in illusion. Ideologies are used to justify the injustice done by capitalism. So ideologies are evil. Ideologies are hegemonic tools. But uh, Michel Foucault has some contrary beliefs on this. So we'll be talking about this also. Uh, simply, ideology includes set of ideas proposed by the dominant class of a society to all members of the society. This is more Marxist concept. So, ideologies are proposed. Ideologies are produced, practiced or enacted by the dominant class. Dominant class. The ruling class may have certain certain interest and to solve the interest or let's say to dominate the ruled class, working class, powerless people, disadvantaged people or let's say the marginalized people, they may use the ideologies. Ideologies are used to brainwash the people, to make the people believe that the wrong thing is right and the right thing is wrong. Ideologies are both cognitive and social. Cognitive is related to rational processing, intellectual processing, mental faculty. So, ideologies are related to rational processing and social processing, social activities. They are abstract, they are not concrete, they are abstract mental systems that organize socially shared attitudes, that shape our attitudes, that shape our belief. Ideologies govern our thought and behavior, mostly in the societies. The ideologies of the rulers are dominant and the others have to take, others take them for granted. Critical discourse analysis studies about this also. Ideologies carry social functions as to allow members of a group to organize their group, coordinate uh, their social actions and goals, protect their resources gain access to the resources and control specific uh, group attitudes. Uh, this is uh, another statement. Uh, some more uh, statements about ideology. Ideology influences the matters of language use. Now, what is the uh, relationship between discourse and ideology? You have to be clear here. Ideology is a belief system. And this belief system is reflected in our text and talk. So language or the discourse is the medium through which ideology is transmitted to the people. It is a medium, channel. Discourse is the channel. Discourse is the medium. Through discourse ideology is exercised. Through discourse ideology is justified or falsified. Suppressive or non repressive or non repressive ideologies. Both are the product of language. Ideologies are the product of discourse. Ideology helps people interpret discourse. So, ideologies and discourses have a reciprocal relationship also. Discourses influence ideologies, ideologies influence discourse. So, ideologies help people interpret discourse means certain discourse is interpreted from the perspective of certain ideology like same discourse 
that may be poem or story or any other, can be interpreted from Marxist point of view. We can wear Marxist glasses and uh, see a particular text, and you can see one one sort of picture there. If we wear feminist glass glasses, we may find another picture. If we wear orientalist glasses, we may find another picture. So, how we interpret a text, how we understand certain discourse, that is that may be based on ideology. Uh, in the sense, our interpretation, our understanding, okay, whatever we understand, whatever we interpret, whatever we explain may not always be objective because there is the dominance, there is the influence of ideology. Ideologies are formed on the basis of, con sorry, discourses are formed on the basis of contemporary ideologies. So, ideologies influence the discourse. Discourse is a dynamic side of ideology. Ideology is exercised through discourse. Discourse is the site where ideology is practiced. It means people's ideology is expressed through discourses. And there are some similarities and differences between ideologies and discourses. Uh, Rosa Fowler uh, states that discourse is speech or writing seen from the point of view of beliefs. So belief, values, these are ideologies. And uh, our discourse, our discourse may be the mirror of that idea. Discourse is speech or writing seen from the point of view of that belief, values and categories which it embodies. These beliefs, etc., constitute the way of looking at the world. How we understand the world, how we interpret the world, how we look at the world, how we understand something, the way we think, the way we behave, the way we understand, all these things are influenced by ideologies and these beliefs, values, ideologies, our perspectives, all these things influence the shape and size of the discourse. Discourse and ideologies are interrelated in this sense. Okay. So there are some differences between uh, ideologies and discourse. Discourse is defined in terms of textual and contextual basis, whereas ideology is dependent on socio-political theories. Discourse is a linguistic notion. Ideology is a philosophical notion. Discourse has direct political alliance and commitment, whereas ideology has I sorry, discourse has indirect political alliance and commitment, whereas ideology has uh, direct political alliance and commitment. Discourse is broad in its area, whereas ideology is narrow in its area. So these are some of the differences between ideology and discourse. Uh, unlike Marxist ideas, unlike Marxist uh, theory, uh, Michel Foucault uh, believes, he argues, uh, Michel Foucault argues that ideology may not be necessarily false or suppressive. Ideology may not be necessarily false. It may not be necessarily suppressive. It may be repressive or non-repressive. Its truth or falsity is a relative concept. Uh, it, is, it may be true or false. It depends on the context. Uh, and uh, uh, the difference between ideology, ideology and uh, discourse can be understood in terms of, in terms of truth of ideology, truth in terms of truth and ideology, in terms of subjects and economic determinants of discourse. And uh, according to Foucault, ideology may not be necessarily false. Ideology may not always be a false consciousness. Ideology is not unitary. 
it is not unitary subject is not always unitary rather the subject is in the process is in process uh, regarding marxist and uh, uh, okay uh, foucauldian uh, views uh, there are some differences differences uh, to see ideology subject economic base and so on uh, according to fuku economic base is not only the determinant of discourse discourse is not always determined by economic base next thing is uh, economic base does not always uh, specify or define the subjectivity subject is not unitary in this sense various factors determine the subjectivity of a person language is the site where socio political and power struggles are acted out so these are some points uh, about the differences between differences between discourse and ideology now uh, another topic is every discourse is made up of a uh, certain properties certain elements or certain constituents uh, now uh, let's talk about those constituents of a discourse or discursive elements discursive structures how is a particular discourse composed how is a particular discourse made up of what are the ingredients of that discourse so we'll be talking now and after this uh, after uh, after finishing this topic uh, okay uh, i'll end this presentation and the remaining topics uh, will be discussed uh, in the next part of my presentation so i request all of you uh, to watch both uh, both parts uh, part 1 and part 2 uh, in the next uh, part uh, we'll be talking about different approaches to discourse analysis uh, we'll be more focused on uh, theories methods uh, uh, how uh, resources can be carried out uh, in in the field of discourse analysis i hope i uh, will be watching both sections to get more ideas clear ideas on critical discourse analysis now let me uh, say something about uh, discursive structures every discourse is made of of the following discursive structures they are episteme the statement the discourse and discourses the archive the exclusion within a discourse the circulation of the discourse so these are the discursive structures or discursive elements of a discourse now the first one is episteme uh, but before that uh, okay again uh, the meaning of discursive structures simply discursive structures are the building blocks of discourse they are the constituents of discourse discourses have particular structures which could be found in cultural artifacts as well as larger scale structures a discursive structure is the product of internal mechanism of a discourse uh, internal formation or composition of discourse discursive structures are the framework on which discourse is constructed uh, this is discursive formation we get a discursive formation also discursive formation is a systematic grouping of discourses which seem to bear uh, similarities to one another either in content or in function uh, so uh, there are other points also please read yourself so discourse structure what are the discursive 
elements we'll be talking now. Uh, as I told you earlier, the first element is the episteme. Uh, simply, episteme is a set of assumptions or principles within which a culture formulates ideas. There is a culture, it has its own values and assumptions, it has its own ideas, certain principles, certain norms, and uh, episteme is the embodiment of those norms, those assumptions. Episteme is the in, is the ground of thought, ground of uh, cultural thought, cultural belief, on the basis of which objects in discourse are constructed. Uh, whether you remember or not, uh, earlier I told you that discourse is cultural, discourse is constitutive, discourse is socially conditioned, culturally conditioned, politically conditioned, institutionally conditioned. And different uh, institutions, cultures, communities have their own ground of thought. They have their own beliefs, own assumptions. And episteme is the set of such assumptions or principles. Episteme accounts for the changes in the discursive systems over time. The changes that subsequently causes to the cultural view of reality. The episteme or those assumptions may not remain static. They may not remain same all the time. They undergo change. And when episteme changes, which is also called epistemic break, there may come change in the discourse form, discourse, content, discourse, structure also. So every discourse is grounded on certain set of assumptions, which is called episteme. It is the ground of thought on which at a particular time some statements and not others are counted and knowledge. Every time, forever, same statement cannot be counted as knowledge. The statement which was counted as knowledge in the past may not be counted as knowledge now and the statement which is counted as knowledge now may not be counted as knowledge in future. It means there may come change in the epistemes. And more things you uh, read yourself please uh, because of time limitation, time constraints. Uh, I am go going to Okay, say the brief uh, explanation, brief meaning only. And Foucault says that there can be epistemic break at certain moment in a culture. It means there are discontinuous developments in discursive structures. Epistemic break may influence the structure, discursive structure. Epistemic break enable to counter the ideas of progress and improvement of culture, uh, like Marxist ideas, conservative Marxist ideas, and neo Marxist ideas, postmodern Marxist ideas are different now. It means it is because of epistemic break in Marxist ideology, Marxist discourse, let's say. Another one is another component of a discourse is a statement itself. Statements, statements are the primary building blocks of discourse. Even epistemes are found, are okay, are reflected in uh, statements. Statements are true and knowledgeable units in discourse. They are neither an utterance nor proposition. Uh, they are neither a psychological nor a logical entity, neither an event nor an ideal form. Uh, they are true and knowledgeable units in discourse and uh, the sentence, the statements are the po powerful sentences that have force and effect uh, which could be considered as serious, serious speech act. So meaningful, significant, forceful utterances are the sentences can be called statements. Uh, uh, statements are used as the building blocks of discourse. And Foucault 
claims that those utterances and the text which are approved as knowledge can be classified as utterances means uh, or let's say statements statements should carry knowledge should carry knowledge uh, approved knowledge approved truth epistemes are constructed from these statements these statements are grouped together and epistemes are formed next uh, next term next uh, unit of discourse structure is discourse the symbol of the discourse and the plural discourses uh, simply the discourse uh, refers to the set of rules and procedures for the production of particular uh, particular discourses as a whole so at macro level okay from macro perspective all the set of rules on the basis of which uh, text and talk are produced can be called discourse and discourses are the uh, groups of statement themselves the totality of statements the totality the togetherness of statements can be called discourses and for males discourses are the set of sanctioned statements which have some institutionalized force and discourse is the type of knowledge that is sanctioned by many of the institutions within a time culture or in a socio political setting so discourse is discipline itself whereas discourses are the units of disciplinary knowledge uh, once again discourse is discipline total framework of the text and talk is discourse uh, total set of rules uh, and procedures for the production of text and talk can be called discourse where are the units of uh, that disciplinary knowledge can be called discourses it means discourse is made up of discourses discourse is discipline knowledge uh, broader social practice whereas discourses are the fragments of fragments units or components of discourse uh, we can understand in this way also and another uh, component of discursive structure is archive uh, archives are the boundaries and limits of discourse uh, which work alongside the notion of episteme uh, michel foucault uh, says that uh, uh, there are different institutions different organizations they have their own code of conduct they have their own norms rules governing principles uh, they have their own ideologies or the beliefs about what is right what is wrong what is sable what is not sable what can be done what cannot be done and with the help of archive archive those boundaries those limits are drawn uh, the third meaning of discourse as given by michel foucault uh, is concerned with regulating principle regulating practice discourse is a re regulated practice discourse is a uh, discourse is certain text and talk uh, which tells us about the things to be done things not to be done it means in every discourse there are such boundaries or the limits which are archive so they are the boundaries and limits of discourse which work alongside the notion of the epistem archive is a set of rules which are followed at a given period and for a definite society so every discourse every discourse contains certain rules discourse tells us about the rules regulations to be followed that is archive archive is discursive structure archive in discursive structure include limits and forms of expressibility what can be expressed what cannot be expressed conservation 
memory and reactivation. Foucault says that in archives should be seen as the set of discursive mechanism that limits what can be said, what cannot be said. In what form? What can be said in what form? And what is counted as worth knowing and remembering? This is archive. Exclusion within a discourse is also a discursive component, discursive element. So discourses can be excluded. Certain discourses can be excluded from the mainstream of discourse if it is contrary to the dominant ideas or disciplinary practices. In discursive practice, in the course of text and talk, each and everything cannot be said or cannot be written. There are certain limitations. If certain ideas, certain views, certain uh, verbal, non-verbal behavior go against the norm, against the norm of particular institution, particular organization, or against mainstream of discourse, that may be excluded. For Foucault, discourse is regulated by institutions in order to ward off some of its dangers. All the things, all the things may not be included in particular discourse. Like taboos are not included. Those things which are prohibited. Prohibited. Those things which are prohibited by the law, prohibited by uh, moral values uh, or cultural uh, norms, social systems. They are not included in a particular discourse. So exclusion occurs in a discourse. Each and everything may not be included in a discourse. And there are three ways of practicing exclusion in discourse. One is prohibition or taboo. Like talking about love and sex openly in Nepali culture. Is excluded. I mean, it is, this, this is excluded from uh, the discourse while talking to family members and others, we don't include this. The discourse of insane and irrational, for example, ignoring the speech of mad people, giving more value to the speech of rational people, okay, this is also, this practice is also excluded. The division of knowledge as true and false. Generally, truth is included and false thing is excluded from our discourse. So these are uh, some of the uh, points related to the exclusion of discourse. And once discourse is produced to make it alive, to make it functional, to make it operational, it has to be circulated in the society. The audience should know about this. They may be circulated in oral form or written form through different media, different channels. There are certain, inter certain internal and external mechanisms of discourse constituents which keep certain discourses in existence. Discourse should be circulated and disseminated in order to survive and function. And Foucault says that with the help of commentary, discourse, discourse can survive in the society. Discourse can be circulated in the society, giving status of academic discipline, a particular discourse produced by a particular person can be given academic value, academic status that may be included in the uh, course of school, college or university. That is also the way of circulating the discourse, making the discourse survive, exist in the society. Rare faction, making it rare. Rare faction rules out deviant discourse, but it also positively licenses and enables acceptable discourse. It allows the qualified authority to produce a discourse. So all the people cannot be cannot produce discourse. Only qualified people can be called discourse. So giving certain quality, okay, presenting certain discourse as standard discourse, quality discourse is also the way of uh, making the discourse survive or exist in the society. Individuals potential creativity within the discursive constraints. So though there are certain discursive limitations, 
individual's potential creativity creativity of an individual is acknowledged it is respected and discourse survives in this way discourse is circulated in this way so these are the components or the structures of uh, discourse or these are called the discursive components so uh, once again uh, let me read those components only uh, discursive components or discursive structures episteme episteme a set of assumptions uh, beliefs which may be uh, socially conditioned or institutionally conditioned statements knowledgeable units of utterances discourse uh, the macro macro unit macro structure of a text and talk that is discourse the fragments of text and talk can be discourses archives are the boundaries the limitations uh, next one is the exclusion within a discourse all the contents of uh, contents may not be included in discourse because of some limitations and once discourse is produced it is circulated in the society uh, with the help of uh, various means uh, various channels various mediums uh, various uh, practices discourse practices communication uh, and so on uh, so uh, i want to uh, stop my presentation here uh, this is the first part of my presentation and uh, uh, in the next uh, part next section of the presentation uh, I'll be focusing on approaches and methods to CDA and remaining key concepts. So till then, uh, I want to say goodbye from here. I hope uh, you'll enjoy this video. This is my attempt only. I am not perfect uh, in this discipline. Just I shared what I understood about critical discourse analysis, being a teacher of discourse, but still uh, I have to go many miles uh, to be fully clear about the about uh, about those concepts in depth. And I hope uh, by watching both uh, videos, uh, somehow your knowledge gap will be bridged. Okay. Uh, once again, thank you very much to everyone. Namaste.